Well, hello there YouTube and welcome to the continuation of this Rembrandt Master Study. So it's been some time now and the painting has dried. So remember we did a Verdaccio style underpainting, so a greenish underpainting. So if you missed the underpainting layer or the grisaille of this painting, uh, please see the previous YouTube video. Also the one before that was when we did the umber drawing for this. So now we're going to get into into color so let's take a look at the palette all right so for the most part I tend to prefer to use the Zorn palette which is the four color palette which is lead white yellow ochre cadmium red and black but for this this is going to be a glaze so we're actually going to have to use some transparent colors we've got some transparent colors over here so we have alizarin crimson which is a really nice transparent deep red this is a Rublev color, this is orange ochre. For those of you that don't have access to Rublev, it is pigment PY43, iron oxide hydroxide. And we're gonna use a little bit of our raw umber, which was our drawing color from before. So those three are transparent colors, so we're going to use them for our initial glaze. And the initial glaze is gonna be dark, and it's going to be warm. So you can see already on its own, which by the way, the palette is, uh, all of this paint that was on here is dry. Yes, I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but for the most part, um, you know, guiding you through the colors should be uh, sufficient in my opinion to, to um, so you can get an idea of what we're doing. So the orange ochre and the alizarin mixed together mainly orange ochre not as much alizarin and now a tad bit of raw umber so mostly orange ochre and less of the alizarin the crimson and even less of the raw umber Now since this is going to be a really dark orangey color, I'm going to put a little bit of medium into it, even though it's already fairly transparent on its own. So right over here we have Neo McGilp. So a tad bit of Neo McGilp goes into that. And let's just do a little test ride. Let's see how this glaze does. So I'm going to use a Synthetic brush, it's just a cheap synthetic brush. Uh, I don't need that much paint on the brush, so I'm fine with using a synthetic, but you can use whatever you feel is best. All right, let's test it out. So I'm not entirely sure what it's going to look like. I'm not, I'm not gonna be sure what it's gonna look like until I add a thin glaze into one part of the head. So we're just gonna start off over here. And already you can see it's way too, way too red and way too transparent. So we're gonna have to go back to the palette and we're basically going to have to modify the uh, mixture here. The first thing that I'm pretty sure it's going to need is a tad bit of white. So I'm adding a tad bit of white. And of course it's lead white. Yes, I know lead white is not transparent, but we're adding enough medium to this that it should help out. So lead white, now we're gonna add a little more raw umber. Yellow ochre, yellow ochre is transparent, fairly transparent on its own. All right, so rather than clean this brush off with solvent, I'm just going to use the paper towel, take as much of it off as I can, just dry brushing some of it off. Since it's a synthetic brush, it doesn't hold paint that well. It's, it doesn't hold paint as much as a bristle, so this should be fine. Now let's just take this and have another go at it. Actually, before we do that, Let's just add a little more medium and see how this goes. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out over here. 
and that seems to be working out pretty well so what I'm going to do is of course safety first get your gloves on before you handle the oil paint and what I'm going to do is just get a piece of paper towel and I'm just going to get rid of the first attempt so getting rid of the first attempt you can still see some of the paint underneath of it or some of the paint that I subtracted and just getting rid of all of it okay so now I'm going to just apply that glaze color again And so I'm glazing just enough where I can see the, uh, the mid-tones underneath. I'm not going to glaze the sclera. It's a little more medium. So remember, I'm just using Neo McGilp as my medium. So it's going to take on a bit of a Martian look. By Martian, I mean like it's going to look kind of orangey. But we're going to paint into it anyway. So I added more paint there. I'm trying to avoid putting too much in the shadow. For the shadow, we're going to actually create another glaze. So it's going to be a series of glazes that we're going to be using here. Now you see why I made that initial layer much lighter. So you can see everything just shining through. When you glaze like this, you really want to use a fast dryer. So something like Neo McGilp or Galkit or Liquin or something like that. And you want to give the paint enough time to settle into the surface. So once it starts to settle in and stiffen a tad bit, then we're going to be able to paint right into it. Okay, so now the darks are going to get glazes of their own. So let's return to the palette. All right, so in order to glaze the shadows, we're going to need a different mixture. And it's going to be similar to the original one. So let's use the original mixture as a starting point. And we're going to use black. And I think just black and orange ochre might be the best combo for this. So I'm going to get a little more of the orange ochre. It's a relatively harmless color. There's no lead in it or cadmiums. So you can handle the paint tube without gloves, without too much fear. So 
a little more black. So just black and orange ochre. Okay, so just like before, I'm going to just dry clean the brush. Notice one thing that I'm not using is solvent. I'm not using any solvent. At least not for the glazes. You need to use a medium for that. And you could, in theory, glaze with just the paint as well. This is just the paint. But on its own, let's see if you can see this. On its own, it's very, uh, very um, stiff. So now you see with the medium, you see that? You can see that it's much thinner. That's what we want. So let's give this a go. Okay, so this is just going to be black and orange ochre. Now as a glaze, what I want is it is for it to darken the shadows. And it seems to be darkening just fine. I'm adding a little more Neo McGilp. So based on how dark you want it to go, you can add more pressure. So I'm using the paper towel to take some of it off. So I'm using this to blend. So it's going from the shadows into the dark lights. That's more of a dark light. And what this is doing is it's building up the values in a more uniform, uh, more uniform style. And you can use the less transparent parts to actually draw in information that was, wasn't there before. Now, I always have to remind you that I'm not claiming to be painting the way Rembrandt painted. And in fact, I highly doubt he would have built this one up with uh, transparent glazes like this. But as you see, we're adding color 
on top of the information that we already found in the grisaille. And at this point, all we're going to have to do is just build up the highlights now and adjusting the midtone colors wherever need wherever we need to. But this gives us an excellent base and the values as you see are still holding together quite well. But remember, don't accidentally glaze the light and the shadow at the same time. Okay. So next we're going to have to glaze the dark the darker regions of the painting. So that's going to be a much more uh, simple mixture to create. So let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. And that's going to be just quite simply black and raw umber. So just black mixed with raw umber. So remember on its own, it's going to be too opaque. So adding a little bit of Neo McGilp makes it thinner. So with the addition of the Neo McGilp, we have a nice and thin mixture that we're going to use for the black. Not that it's black, you know that it's raw umber and black. So we're going to use this now to glaze the darker areas. So let's just start off with this little corner here. And as you see, it's not really that apparent that it is a glaze. And I'm actually going to let some of the umber drawing show through for the hair a little bit. And let's see what it looks like if we drag it into the background. Just so you can get a, an idea. So you see it's more of a more of a nice brownish color but we're gonna mix up a different color when we get to the background so let me do a little uh, camera edit here so you can see the rest of the darks covered and I have darkened some of the um, the darker dark so I think what I'm gonna do before we go into the background color is we're gonna actually just use the dark value of the glaze just for the um, the fur that he's wearing. And a little experiment. Let's just glaze this as well. And so I'm just adding more paint in the spots that need to be darker and less paint and more medium in the spots that need to be lighter. And that's actually working out pretty well giving some of that fur texture. Kind of a quick and simple way to paint the fur. There's some fur over here too. And that should be good, no need to go too crazy with that. So now we're just gonna mix up a nice dark grayish color for the background. All right, so for the background tone, it's going to be just a nice grayish, maybe greenish color. So I'm gonna mix, let's just do raw umber, yellow ochre, of course we're gonna need some white, and black. So black and yellow ochre on their own make a nice green but I'm just throwing the raw umber in there just to kind of make it more of a brownish green and I'm just going to use the glaze a glazing brush a little more medium 
so that it's nice and thin. Now you can see how much thinner it is there. And let's go ahead and paint the background. And this brush does not pick up a lot of paint, so none of this is intended to be uh, impasto. The impasto paint uh, I, I will put in later. Remember, impasto just means um, uh, painting very thick which is what Rembrandt is famous for. Not just that, obviously. Rembrandt is uh, famous for being an excellent painter, and I think one of the best, if not the best, portrait painter in all of art history. But in any case, it's, it's not time yet for the impasto. Alright, so let's do another little camera edit, and then we'll have the background all covered. Alright, so now that the background is covered and some adjustments were made to the, uh, the silhouette around the hair and some of the outside shape of the hat, the glaze for the skin tone should start to tack up a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is with a, a little piece of paper towel, I'm going to start to subtract a tiny amount of the glaze going slightly back to underpainting. And I'm just going to pave the way for where I'm going to mix in the highlights. Now obviously I want to keep the color in most of the areas. It's just some areas I want to have little to no, uh, little to none of that hot color. So this is another brush. So as you can see, the paint's kind of nicely settled in now with this glaze. And using this brush, I can easily control how much paint I want to subtract. So I started off doing this with the, um, the paper towel, but now I moved to a brush. All right, so that should be about good. All right, so now we're going to mix up the highlights that we're going to use. So let's just mix this color, one of the glazes that we used. This was basically the main glaze, and I'm at just adding lead white to it. And now a little yellow ochre. So this part's going to be very opaque and very light. And we're going to get a, a uh, not a synthetic. This is a sable. This is a size 5 pure red sable. Silver brush brand. And now we're just going to begin to add the highlights. So the first highlight is this one that goes all the way across the cheekbone. 
And I'm gonna get another synthetic brush, the same brand, same exact brush, but use it to blend. As you can tell, no impasto today. This is mainly for the values. The next highlight region is the nasal bone. Now we'll just blend this out. And this is as simple as flesh tones are going to get. Most of it has been done with the glaze. And lead white is the perfect white to use for this. If you don't have lead white, then use flake white replacement uh, made by Gamblin brand. There are other alternatives too, but that's the one I have the most experience with. And what we're doing is we're punching up the highlights again. So the next time we work on this, there will be more glazes. But not as much. So the next time we'll be basically building us towards the uh, impasto layers. And we're going to finish this off with impasto paint.
So that initial glaze is going to be mainly only apparent in the midtones now. And it's a nice kind of ghostly look, ghostly smooth look when you're blending the the color in. Now obviously every point, every point of which I put down light is not meant to be a highlight. So I am subtracting light as I'm blending away. The areas with the most light are going to have the most paint. It's going to be brighter. And even then, before I let the painting dry, I'm going to push the highlights lighter than I ultimately want them to be to make room for the next addition of color. So also in a sense every spot that I'm adding light to is a plane change. Remember just like I mentioned in the Verdaccio, every part of the every plane that's facing the light the most is going to be brighter and planes that are facing the light less closer to say a parallel angle to the light are going to be darker closer to shadow So what's happening color-wise is the underpainting or the verdaccio is providing those cooler notes and darker notes to the skin tones. The initial glaze that we used is providing those darker warm colors and now the lights are blending into both of those aspects. So we have a nice control between cool and warm, light and dark.
Now obviously some plane changes need to be sharper, such as this one. And all of this with just a few mixtures of color. Pretty neat. Now sable brushes are really nice because they give you quite a, a lot of control. But they also do pick up a nice amount of paint which is why I'm able to use it to create these effects. But in order for this to work, you must mix the value that you want or that you intend for the highlight. That's why we started there. And you can tell that most of the work involved in this was done in the Verdaccio. One more paint, makes it brighter. Now, as, you're, as you've seen, I keep repeating this because it's a really nice aspect of this technique. Very minimal mixing has gone into this. Even pre-mixing, very little pre-mixing has gone into this. But what needs to happen is that we need this to dry lighter so that we can keep building the painting in this way. Now obviously we are going to have to mix for some planes before we can um, you know, finish this painting up and however many layers left uh, there are, but it's just a nice, clean and simple way to create skin tones.
And if you're wondering why I wanted the initial glaze to start to get a little tacky, to start to solidify a little, to solidify a little, to solidify, um, I wanted it to solidify slightly so that there would be some resistance when I add this color. It gives me more of a chance to control the edges. Once again, unbelievably simple color. Unbelievably simple color to obtain these skin tones and these skin tone transitions. And before we put this one aside to let it dry, I'm just going to use straight lead white into the brightest of the highlights so that we can repeat the glazing process next time and add even more specificity. So just straight lead white. We're going to blend it out. And the key word is contrast. The most contrast we can create between the values, the better. That's a critical component of this classical painting uh, aesthetic.
So remember, a similar process to what we were just doing, but instead with just lead white. So it's much lighter and much brighter that I want the painting to be ultimately. I'm going to take a little gamble here. So straight lead white. And I'm going to blend it across the nose. And when we glaze it next time, we'll be able to push some more subtlety into it and have a nice uh, a layered look to the painting where you'll be able to see through the individual layers. And that should be about it for this layer of color. Once again, very, very simple. Now let me zoom you out so you can see the whole painting. So very, very simple glazing and very, very simple color mixing. Almost little to no color mixing. It's, it's, it's hilarious how little we had to mix in order to get the skin tones. And even when we pre-mixed, not very much mixing went into that. Anyway, so remember the upload schedule for these YouTube videos is Saturday morning and Wednesday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Around that time is when a new uh, YouTube video of mine will be uploaded. So a similar process, I'm going to be doing as many master studies as I can do because I find that this really does uh, build my painting experience more and more. So if you find this video to be helpful to you, please uh, share this video, uh, share my YouTube channel with your with your friends that are also interested in art or anyone that may be interested in uh, watching these kinds of painting videos. If you want to take your education further with me, uh, you can check out my online classes on Patreon. Uh, that is linked in the description box down below. So if you go to the description box, you will find the link to my online classes as well as the information for what materials I am using if you want to know what paints I'm using and what brushes I'm using you can find that information in the description box of this video that being said I really hope that this video helps you out I wish you the very best in all of your artwork and I'll see you on the next one